Hey, crypto family. Hope you're all having a good day today. So the market's taking a little breather. A lot of the coins are in the red, and I'm going to go over that in a couple minutes. But first, I'm going to cover a couple news articles. So the first article is about Tron. And if you look at the coins today on CoinMarketCap, you can see most of them are in the red, but Tron is up over 17%. So it's one of the only altcoins that's up double digits today. So I want to go actually over a couple of reasons why it's up so much and what I think for it for the future. So this article, it says Tron surges 33% as volume returns. DApps set new records. And DApps, for those who don't know, are decentralized applications like games, either on mobile phones or on desktops they can play. And they, they have a wide array of different things they can be. But it says here, Volume has returned to the Tron market in the past week while blockchain transactions and DApp usage continue to record new highs. It says Tron transactions soar thanks to DApps. It says, according to the most recent weekly DApp report to come out of Tron HQ, new records were set this week thanks to the release of Tron Shrimp Farm, the Amp Farmer, two new DApps on the utilizing the Tron blockchain. And they said, quote, the daily average users of the newly launched Tron Shrimp Farm and Amp Farmer have made new records among all Tron DApps. According to the DAP radar, Tron Shrimp Farm has a daily average user of 15,000, surpassing the previous record number at 2,000, which Tron Bet has created. So as you know, a lot of these DAPs can gain traction with users. So as you remember, CryptoKitties on the Ethereum network, that shot up. Um, a lot of these DAPs, you know, can become addicting and people just love to play them. So especially if they're, you know, on mobile phones or just very easy to access. It said Tron goes moon. So it says... In addition, Tron Bet has made a new record with the new game, Moon, going live. Tron Bet's highest daily transaction number reached 1 billion Tron, and single daily, single day dividend reached 26 million Tron, making it a phenomenal dap of Tron. So Tron is one of those coins that has a big follower base, similar to Ripple, similar to Bitcoin Cash. A lot of these other coins, you know, they have big follower bases, and one of the reasons why I do like Tron is because that they do have a lot of developments and they're still hiring people in this bear market. So as you know, a lot of people had to lay off. I know the Bitmain company, they had to lay off a lot of their workers in Israel, and just a lot of layoffs are going on in the different crypto startup companies and the different crypto companies in general. And it's good to see, you know, at least some of the companies are still able to produce new products and hire more people. So that's one of the reasons I like it. And it says, quote, this game is more exciting and fun than traditional dice games. Player have the chance to double or multiply their principal, but also risk losing all their principal. So you see, it kind of gets in that addicting thing, which is what entices a lot of people. And the biggest thing with these games is they have to transact Tron with these dApps. So it says, in addition to an increased user base occupying the blockchain, the amount of Tron changing hands thanks to Tron dApps is on a rapid increase. According to the weekly report, over 1 billion Tron changed hands in one day thanks to the app's usage. Now, in no way am I saying buy Tron. Um, it's just showing you why it's up today so much and exactly what's going on behind the scenes because of that. So dApps are very popular. There's a lot of usage. You need to use the coin to be able to transact. And it's just the more people using the Tron coin, the more, the higher the price will surge. So just something to keep in mind when looking at potential for future long-term growth. Now, the second article I want to talk about today is by Cointelegraph, and it says, Wall Street Journal suggests quick sale repurchase of Bitcoin may lower your taxes. So taxes are a big deal, especially as more and more people get into cryptos. You know, the IRS is going to start cracking down on making sure people report their taxes, their capital gains, or losses. And the biggest thing here is it says that you can technically sell your Bitcoin and then repurchase it as soon as an hour later to in order to get a tax break for next year's taxes so for example some of the capital gains taxes can be as high as 40 percent if it's short term and then long term gains and losses meanwhile max out an upper bound of 23.8 percent so a short term gain is basically for holding a coin for less than a year and you sell it if you make a gain on that it can be taxed as high as 40 percent depending on your circumstances and then but if you hold it for longer than a year then that's a long term gain which can only be taxed a max of 23.8%. So that's why there is advantage of a lot of people holding their coins for longer than a year. Now on the flip side of that if you sell your coins then you can take your losses and the deduct that from your taxes. Now I'm no in no means a tax professional so please this is not financial advice at all. I'm just going about what I've read and what different people have said. Now in saying that it has uh, actually Jim Calvin, who's a CPA and crypto specialist at Deloitte Tax, 
told the Wall Street Journal that as little as an hour and certainly a day after booking a loss is enough to wait so that traders remain on the right side of the law if they choose to repurchase their crypto. More broadly, the Wall Street Journal notes timing is crucial as tax losses can be carried forward but not back. So if you sold at a gain during the crypto bull run of winter 2017, your losses this year post-April can't offset the tax owed on earlier profits. So again, always keep that in mind. Um, you know, any any losses that you incur this year, they can't offset the gains that you made last year or before April of this year. So something to keep in mind. But you still can say, say you bought Bitcoin at 15000 and then you wanted to try to deduct from taxes for this year. So you can sell Bitcoin right now while it's at 4000 and that's a $11,000 loss. And then you can buy Bitcoin an hour later and say it just stays at 4000 the rest of the time then you can deduct that $11,000 loss for next year's taxes. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're holding Bitcoin in case it increases a little bit, and then you're able to just deduct the difference. So say it increased 2,000. So that 2,000 of you know capital gain offset by the 11,000, you can still report 9,000 of losses this year. So you're still winning. So again, something to keep in mind when you are trying to play your taxes right. And again, not financial advisor at all. Um, you know, basically the IRS, I said, is going to start cracking down. So make sure you're doing everything legally, consult a tax professional. But again, you know, make sure that you are seeing all the avenues that you want to go with reporting your taxes. Now, last but not least is an article by Coindesk. It says executives at Korean crypto exchange Upbit indicted for fraud. So Upbit is a popular Korean exchange and they were actually found of inflating their volume through bogus orders. So I said the executives are alleged to have made a fraudulent transactions between September to December of last year using a fake corporate account to make bogus orders worth $226 billion to inflate trading volume figures and attract more customers to the exchange. Now, as you know, a lot of these exchanges do inflate their volume in order to attract more people to the exchange because they want to get ranked higher. They want more people to use their exchange. And again, it creates more liquidity for them. So this is actually not legal. So companies can't do this. And companies that are found to have done this, you know, can spend a big fine or time in jail. And it says here, Upbit, however, denied the allegations in a notice issued Thursday stating that, quote, the company provided liquidity to the company's corporate account in order to stabilize the trading market at the beginning of the service opening. This period is from September 24th, 2017 to December 11th, 2017. Now, I find that very hard to believe that they say this in order to, quote, stabilize the trading market because between those months, I mean, Bitcoin rose its most. I mean, it went from, you know, 3,000 all the way almost up to 20,000 by that time. I mean, there's still a couple days after that, but it started its rise. And I find it very hard to believe that during this time frame, they just happen to be, you know, carrying out these illegal transaction orders just to inflate their volume so more people could flock to their exchange. So again, something to keep in mind here. And again, you know, they are, people are trying to regulate cryptos and they are really cracking down on illegal activities to make sure that the environment is healthy when big investors want to come in and the mainstream adoption happens. So there's something to keep in mind here is there are a lot of exchanges inflating their volume. I'm sure a lot of you know that. Um, always better to be you know safe than sorry and just look at the safest exchanges. I know that right now, I mean, Bittrex is regulated. Uh, it's a U.S. exchange. And then, of course, Coinbase um, still up in the air about Binance and Bitfinex. But just something to keep in mind with those is always make sure that you preserve your capital. And again, keep your coins on a cold storage wallet. Keep them offline. And that's the safest way to do it. So with that, let's go ahead and look at the coins for today and see what's going on with some analysis. So Bitcoin is down 2.8% today to 39.88. XRP is down 2.8% to 36.3 cents. Ethereum's down 3% to $110. Bitcoin Cash is up 4% to $188. It's actually down quite a bit from its high it had of over $230. And then EOS is down 1.8% to $2.65. Now, looking at some Bitcoin analysis. So you can see right now it's at $39.38. And this resistance level I drew is at $4,000. You can see it got above that, but it failed to stay above that $4,000 level. Now, look at here on the four-hour chart, it bounced twice from the 200-day moving average. So if history repeats itself, then we're looking for it to bounce at about 3840. So again, look for that when we go get down to that level. If it does continue to fall from there, we could potentially be looking at 3800 
right here where it was previous resistance turn support and then from there looking possibly at that 3600 level if it cannot make it so again something to look for there which also coincides with 128 day moving average RSI is looking a little better, not as overbought as it was a couple days ago, but again, still overbought, so we may have some more room to the downside. Now look at some analysis for Tron here. Again, there's the four-hour chart as well. Now, this green line and this red line here, I did not change, so these are lines that I already had drawn. You can see this red line was resistance, and once Tron passed over that, it actually bounced exactly off that resistance turns support level now. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to green because it is now support. And then from there, it actually bounced up. And right now I'm looking at it to maintain support at 19.6 cents. So if you scroll back, you can see on November 16th and November 17th, it failed to break above that 19.7 cents and therefore declined. So I'm looking for it to try to maintain support around this level. And then if it increases and looking at the resistance level of 2.3 cents. So you can see it actually almost got up to 2.3 cents. And from there, then it declined. So the reason I'm showing 2.3 cents is it actually coincides here with the resistance on November 9th, November 10th, and November 12th. You can see it couldn't break above that 2.3 cent level. And I believe that's the next level we need to be looking out for. And then the RSI is way over bought and it is on a green nine on the TD sequential. So that's something to keep in mind. It is a very high likely that the next candle could be a reversal candle to the downside. So something to keep in mind here when you are doing your trading. And then looking at Bitcoin Cash, I mentioned it's high that it had yesterday was $232. So you can see how much it retraced. But this green support line I did draw, it did bounce off of that, which is $171. So again, this technical analysis is working here. It also coincided with the 200 day moving average. So if you are thinking of buying Bitcoin cash, you know, maybe look at potentially retesting this $171 level. But if it cannot keep that, then look at it potentially testing this 128 day at around $120. And then this final support here of $98. So again, not financial advice, just my opinion. And resistance we're looking at right now is $209, which also coincides with the resistance on November 26th and November 28th that could not break above that level. So something to keep in mind when trading. But remember, always set your stops, preserve your capital, and never invest what you cannot afford to lose. So with that, if y'all enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment, and please subscribe if you haven't. Really appreciate it. And set notifications. Till next time, thanks for watching.